Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we are going to review these Blick Matte Acrylic Paints that I swatched out in my recent swatch video from my recent enormous massive art haul, during which I bought all of these paints. <laughs> These are the Blick brand matte acrylic paints. I actually got three different full sets and each set had seven colors of two ounce bottles. So all of these are two ounce bottles with the exception of this, which is just my only other acrylic paint. So I just stick it in here because there's room right here. And this giant bottle of white that I had bought to go along with this because you do tend to use up white quickly. Now, I did do that without just even noticing or realizing that all three of the sets I bought come with a little two ounce white. So you're already going to get three whites, one, two, three whites if you get the sets anyway. So I don't know if I needed this yet, but I'm also not mad at it because you can always use an opaque matte acrylic white. So I'm definitely going to get used. I'm not worried about it. These are the swatches I did, and these are the colors. So there's off-white, yellow light, yellow medium, yellow orange light, gold metallic, orange medium, yellow green light, green deep, blue medium, blue light, red deep, red light, green blue light, sage blue, celadon, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how I've been saying it, <laughs> amethyst, violet deep, silver metallic, that's right there, and the brown. So these are the swatches. You can see that they're very matte. The only one that really dried not that matte is the green deep and the gold metallic. These are very streaky and not very matte the same way you would expect a regular acrylic to be. I know this blue medium looks like it might be a little streaky, but I just applied it really weird. You can tell that these are like, look at the violet deep, look at the, the sage blue. These are very, very matte. So I've been very happy with um, the matteness. I also think it's just such a screaming deal. All of this paint, all of that paint costs $30 and those are each two ounces. So, I mean, that's incredible. On the Blick website, it says that Blick's opaque matte surface acrylics are water-based, quick drying, and permanent. They're non-toxic, safe for everyday use. I will say this, when I was actually using them and making the painting that's that we're going to get into right now, that's when I noticed that they really are a little bit smelly. So they're not toxic, but when I first splooched out all of the big lumps of color that I was using, a smell hit me that was like, oh, okay, that's a chemical smell. And then once I got into painting, it dissipated and it was fine. And I don't remember smelling it again. I certainly didn't have a headache. I wasn't lightheaded. I didn't have any effects. And I do have bad allergies. I have pretty bad asthma. So, I'm, and I get hives, like I'm pretty sensitive skin and sensitive breathing person and it didn't bother me it was more just like when you you know first for instance if you like first spray on an eau de toilette or you know any kind of a perfume that first spray has a little bit of an alcohol smell to it and then it evaporates and dissipates it was kind of like that it was the same level of smell where you're like oh i notice a smell and then you don't notice the smell anymore so it's good to see that they're non-toxic it says Obviously, it's an exceptional range of color, highest quality pigments uh, in the formulation. I can't find any pigment information on the website, like PW6 or anything like that, but it says it has high quality pigments on their website and that there is certainly an extremely big range of colors. Like on the Blick website, there's a huge range of colors. It's not just these, but I got the basic colors, which are, you know, this is one of them. And that's kind of the idea. It's these sort of crayon-y, basic, truly basic colors. Your basic crayon blue, crayon green, crayon red, crayon yellow. I would definitely say I was happy with these paints. I thought they blended well. I thought they applied to the paper really easily. They didn't seem to mess up my brushes. You know, they weren't any different from my Turner Acryl gouache as far as that went. They definitely had a little bit more of a smell when I first... Um, squeeze them out onto my palette than the Turner Acryl Wash, but they, again, it dissipated pretty quickly. I was thrilled with the color punch that these had. I think you can see in this painting how beautiful these colors are and how well they worked together. And I just had so much fun with this painting. I just kind of dove in and said to myself, I'm not going to be able to paint the same way I do with watercolor, where my strategy is to do sort of a heavy outline 
and see the outline all the way through to the final piece. In something like this, I'm going to be painting over my lines. So I still did my sketch fairly detailed in light of the fact that I lost so many of those lines <laughs> in the first layer of paint. And I even used my Jin Hao um, fountain pen with the carbon platinum ink that's indelible, you know, permanent black ink. And I lost a lot of that too. But I still, it was like my baby blanket. It was like my little comfort of, oh, I've got my lines. Like I can see them somewhere or at the very least, if I've done the sketch and I've done the lines once, I was confident I could do them again with the paint. And at the very least, the proportions were there, the big shapes were there, and it was easier for me to find the little shapes. I did mess around with the face a lot, even off camera. I literally just turned off the camera because I was so nervous and just felt like it was one of the only times I felt like I was being watched just by having the camera on and that made me nervous because I was like oh is this taking too long like it this kind of looks weird I don't know I need to just turn this off and take as long as it's going to take because I thought well if I run out of room on my camera and then I have to take a whole break I only have two hours to paint start to finish so I've just got to turn the camera off do this however long it takes and then turn it back on to finish um, and that's actually what I did, but it didn't take that long and it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just some kind of a weird mental block. I'm sure I'll get better with it as, you know, I get more used to filming. So pardon me for leaving out some of the details on the face, but I think you'll appreciate that it looks a lot better after that was done. <laughs> so let me tell you how I even decided to do this baby rhino in the first place, because it's a really cool and I'm really loving doing this kind of thing. So I was really torn. I saw that green light, that yellow green light from the pastel set when I unboxed these paints. And I said even then, like, oh, this is really inspiring me. I can't wait to use this in a painting. And I had a very specific painting in mind. There was this little baby bunny that fit in a hand, like it was a baby bunny. And it was so cute and it had such a serious face. And I was like, I wanna paint that bunny with this green background with like an ombre effect. And I just had this whole big idea and I'm still wanting to do that, I very well may still do that exact thing. But I told my husband and he was like, but you literally just did a bunny. You did a bunny like a few videos ago and you haven't done a rhino, why don't you do the rhino? And so I started to get torn because I thought, oh, I do have some really cool gray-ish colors, the celadon, the sage blue, and the off-white all together on this palette are what I ended up using to make with white, obviously, and some brown. Okay, so like a million colors, but that's what I used to make all the range of grays that you're seeing on this rhino. And once he said, you know, what about this baby rhino that was also in my file of, you know, potential references to do at some point, I was like, oh, now that sounds good too. So I posted on my Instagram, I'm creating cute art on Instagram, uh, a poll in my stories. And I was like, hey, what should I draw next? Type in, do you want me to do the baby rhino? This bunny, which wink, wink, was what I was thinking would happen. Or this owl, there's another owl in my references. And that's, yeah, you'll you'll notice. <laughs> I did a lot of work on the face. This is where that happens. <laughs> you'll see some cut, on, cut in and cut out and suddenly it looks a lot better and that's what's about to happen. So um, I put that up there and to my surprise, all of you voted except for, you know, it was actually very close. I shouldn't say all of you. Many of you voted for the bunny. No one voted for the owl. And the majority of people voted for the baby rhino, just like my husband had. So that's how this ended up being the baby rhino. I'm so sorry to all of you bunny voters. Trust me, my heart was with you as well. But I also love how this little chubby baby rhino came out. And I'm sure you're enjoying this too. I'm sure you didn't get your hearts broken that it wasn't the bunny yet. Trust me, it's coming. I'm just not sure if I'm going to do it with these Blick matte acrylic, if I want to do it with my Windsor & Newton or my Sui gouache. Do I want to do it? You know, I've just got so many fun, delicious, wonderful materials. So I'm just trying to decide which medium to use to make it. But it's coming. Trust me, that baby bunny in a little that fits in the hand, it's coming. Probably won't be in a hand. It might be in a teacup. It might be in a little bowl. We'll see. But it's coming. In the meantime, this rhino, I think, was a really good choice. I really enjoyed using all of these different paints, a variety of my new brushes that I got in that haul as well. And just playing with the texture and playing with the shadows, playing with the chubbiness of the arm. You know what I mean? Like the arm in front especially is probably my favorite part of this whole thing because it's so chubby looking. But I also love this, you know, this baby is so smiley and happy and just chilling out in the most beautiful little greenery with some rocks in the background. And I really used a lot of the page. This is uh, not 
it's pretty atypical for me to do something this big even in my sketchbook. Usually I tape off a smaller portion that you're used to seeing, but I just wanted to go whole hog. I wanted to use this whole page. Something about these paints made me feel very free to just use a lot of paint and not worry about it, to use a lot of the page and not worry about it, to try different techniques and just let it go. It was a very loose, relaxed painting for me, and I think that's because I have almost no experience with acrylics. <laughs> All my experience is with Turner acrylic wash, and that is mostly for doing details on top of watercolor or details on top of, or behind actually, um, regular gouache. So I'll do like a layer of permanent acrylic gouache, and then I'll do normal gouache on top. That's my experience with it. I have not done a whole piece like this really, not that much with all acrylic gouache or just basically matte acrylic. So I just kind of let myself relax and say you're probably not going to do this that well so you might as well just have some fun and in the end I actually really like how it came out I'm so impressed I love the depth I love all the different textures on this little guy and I love that he just looks so friendly and you can definitely tell what he is like that's a rhino you can you know what that is when you look at it so I was thrilled with the paints thrilled with the experience and when I say thrilled with the experience I'm including the experience of checking in with you all my audience with what you want and being interactive with you that way. I am very close to 500 subscribers at the time of uh, this video. And here, hold on, enjoy your paint, your tape peel, because that's one of the best things. Um, please, and from me to you, enjoy this beautiful tape peel experience. And I love when the actual painting is revealed behind the tape. It's just like so much fun. Pardon the shaking of the table. <laughs> but I loved interacting with you and when I hit 500 subscribers which I'll be able to use the community tab on YouTube so I'm very excited to have that open up to me so I can do more of that because that's where I would have normally done this because my YouTube community is here on YouTube some of you have followed me over on Instagram but some of you haven't and there's no pressure that you should but it was really the only way I could reach out to you and find out what you wanted me to do next and which of these you would prefer to see in my test painting for these acrylic gouache or <laughs> okay wow this is going to be hard with this many materials to keep them straight matte acrylic paints <laughs> that i was going to do this test painting with so i'm really looking forward to using that with you guys and using the community tab so once i hit 500 subscribers keep your eye out for that in the meantime let's take a close-up look at this adorable little baby rhino omg i love how it came out I deepened up the rocks. I did so many different textures. I just really had a lot of fun with this painting. And I love opening up my sketchbook and seeing this little baby. So cute. Oh, I just want to pinch it. I want to grab it. I want to snuggle it. I know it wouldn't be a good idea in real life. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And until next time, remember to create something cute.